So these lasers that come out your eyes... Well, they're still experimental. You sure this is what you want? I can't just stand by and just assist, Chronic. You know you're more than that to this team. You're more than that to me. I know, Chronic. It's just all those years watching you. Abilities in combat ain't about envy, and you don't want that in action. It's not about envy. Come here. Something I gotta tell you. Boo-hoo. 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 Boing. Boo. On planet Earth. Back in 1967. Over 120 years ago. My great-grandfather, Private Sherman Daniels. I knew him. I, like, knew him personally. Really? You met him? I knew him. You have had to have been so young. Young enough to understand everything you taught me. Wait, you called him private. He was military. In 1960, he was drafted into the Vietnam War. During his tour of service, while he was out in them jungles, he shared stories about how he encountered shit that was supposed to be a myth. But the she saw in them jungles were creatures. Creatures? Okay, what kind? Know the story of the werewolf, the sea monster, and the serpent, the dragon. Well, according to my great granddaddy, there's some monsters back there that the earth people never knew about. Natural creatures, which the soldiers helped kill. Helped. It was times the U.S. occupation and the V.C. joined forces to kill these things just to get them out the way so the U.S. and the V.C. can get back to killing each other. Burning these things to death was the only way to kill them. But it left no record or trace of these things ever existing. Didn't matter. Because the great granddaddy Sherman none of them giants compared to the one little alien. That they encountered first. And this little alien. Cute as could be. Cuter than a teddy bear. But it was a million times more dangerous than all the monsters and beasts put together. How? Because it was the alien that killed all the monsters. And the armies just learned how to. From it. The alien became embedded with the platoon my great granddaddy was in. How long? About four years. A couple of years after your grandfather was drafted. What happened to them? Fast forward back to 1967. A squad went back to their commander's house, a tiny village right around in the jungles. He and the platoon along with my great granddaddy helped him build a house similar to the crib he had back in Pasadena, California. Cause you know, that's where he was living. He had already had a wife and four daughters back in Cali. Years stuck in the war. He fell in love with the woman from Laos. He ended up having four sons with this chick. The commander. Mm-hmm. Years into the after effects of the war caused him to compare the same family lifestyle he had back in Pasadena. He used in Vietnam. So yeah, my great granddaddy and the rest of the platoon recreate the same scenario. Build a house out of trees, dirt, rocks, and an alien's gifts. Next thing you know, he had a housewife and four kids to come home to after a long day, except it wasn't at the office, it was at war in Vietnam. Come home tired, come home drunk, come home hollering and screaming about dinner in the junkie crib, getting violent at the moms in front of the kids. Next thing you know, she got sick of that shit. She took the kids and left. After the platoon arrived. Charlie Company arrived and ambushed the platoon. My great-granddaddy was there. And so was the alien. My great-grandfather was gonna walk away, but the commander shot him after he refused to fight anymore. Before the commander could kill my great-grandfather, a VC killed the commander. 
My great-grandfather survived, but the VC died, and we'll never know what his true intentions were. And the alien? My great-grandfather told me you walked up to him and said, Everything is going to be okay. Through the line. So it transferred all of its energy to my great-grandfather, and it increased his lifespan. So his four child could harness it. You. The alien caused the U.S. Army and the Viet Cong fighters to kill each other that day. It made them kill each other. My great-grandfather used to tell me, all I had to do was smile. And you did. I'm hurt. Chronic. I'm hurt. I'm hurt that you had to carry that all these years. I'm hurt because it feels close. I'm hurt just by you telling me this. You know why. I know. I know. I know. In the 1970s, my great granddad faced a court martial for treason, dereliction of duty. Going AWOL, even sedition, and espionage. Just for walking away? They tried to say he was a spy for the Communist Party. You gotta understand, this was a time when thousands of men were coming home in body bags. The U.S. was losing the war. You had dissidents, the Panthers, impeachment, they looked bad. So when my great-grandfather was the last man standing out over a dozen dead men, they needed a private puncher bag. And one none more satisfying than a black man that think he got a second chance when he ain't about to have a chance in hell. So they tore him down to nothing. They took away his benefits, credentials, pension, rank, titles. And what about the alien? That's what he argued. So that's why they only gave him six months in the stockade, five years in prison, and two weeks in an insane asylum all because of the alien stuff. Chronic, I didn't know. As soon as he was released, his family took him in and went back home. And then he met this girl and had my grandfather. And in the 90s, my father was born. 18 years later, I was born. Coherent. An entire line. That's what legend was talking about. An entire line inspired my great-grandfather to reclaim what belonged to us. His story. History. He got his titles back. Years of litigation. His family. For his family. He got his health benefits we were financially taken care of. But by the time after he won the case, he was so far gone he couldn't even carry on the sentence. Let alone run on. He was in his late 70s when he won the case. He lived to his early 90s. They made him take the fall for everything that happened that day. They made him take the fall for everything that went down. They made him take the fall without his permission. They didn't even need to hold a gun to his head. I think the part that trips me is how they told him he was a coward when he had 26 enemy kills ordered by the United States of America and not one single member on that panel never even fired off a weapon but had the nerve to convict him and call him a coward when he told them how lucky he was to be alive the prosecutor told him the only way you'd be lucky is if you were better off dead see he knew they wanted him to know he was a nobody that's why he would always tell me, 
Trey Sean. Forgive mothers and fathers who tell their children to be somebody. Because it is nothing wrong with being a nobody. Never underestimate a nobody. Because everybody is no different than a dead body. And nobody has to expect somebody before somebody can crawl out from behind they have no right to. Let alone they don't deserve for nobody to prove what somebody really was all along. Pitifully worthless. For the time of the nobody has come for the nobody to reign above all else. Your great-grandfather wasn't a nobody, Chronic. Regardless of the benefits, he gave you a gift. It's not a gift, it's only... It's a curse. But the Harnesser chose you. Only you know why. Come here. Let me show you something. 